Steelers, obviously uh, hometown team, not hometown, but it, it, team that I grew up cheering for. I didn't really have an option. My dad grew up a Steelers fan. There, in turn, I grew up a Steelers fan. There are years that I wish that wasn't the case. So <laughs> it, it does bother me sometimes that I pull for this team. But, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's dive into what they did here. They needed, uh, per, you know, all these different media sources, um, Michael jumps in already. Really like the Anthony, uh, Anthony McFarlane pick. Add him to Connor and Snell. Okay, you know, we'll, we'll see. But they needed offensive line help. They needed cornerback help. And they needed running back help. Uh, they, they got a wide receiver in the second round, Chase Claypool out of Notre Dame, who was fine. I I didn't really like him at Notre Dame, in a, but in a he was crazy, okay. Just stupid deep wide receiver class. You you got maybe the least sexy wide receiver. Now the one thing that scares me is every time the Steelers draft a receiver, the guy turns into the next Hall of Famer. Oh yeah. Like like I didn't you know I didn't know who a lot of their receivers were in the past coming out of high school and college, and they end up being monsters. So anybody who thought Antonio Brown was going to be a freak. You're wrong. You just didn't. No, you had no idea. You had You're no lying. Idea. He, he had a he had a chance to, uh, and, well, yeah, and he obviously he did. To, but, but nobody 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 projected that. No, not right? at all. Uh, McKinnon jumps in. By the way, Rugs reminds me of Urban, or of what Urban said about super fast receivers. They're great on long routes, but have a really hard time trying to break on short routes. They're easier to hold up on those shorter routes. Like I said during the draft, speed kills, but skills win. Uh, you have not watched. Henry Ruggs. He's not just a deep threat. It's completely different, but he, he is fast. So uh, McKinnon said, how many more years till the Steelers are forced to pick up the next quarterback? Uh, from from the rumors I heard today, they're already talking to Cam Newton. So I was going to say, as, I mean, soon, as soon as they can find one. Yeah. Uh, so back to team needs for the Steelers. Offensive line, cornerback, running back. So first round, they went wide receiver, which didn't really need. And in round three, they went with an edge rusher, Alex Highsmith out of Charlotte. Now, I did watch Alex Highsmith multiple times this year because I bet on yeah, Charlotte. You bet on Charlotte quite a I bit. I bet on Charlotte a lot. I love Alex Highsmith. I think he is fantastic. Okay. However, Careful they've already got – They watched a couple of times at a small school play against other small schools. Well, yeah, like I, I thought it was great. Like I, it, In that setting, I saw him play. I thought it was good. However, <laughs> you don't need another edge rusher. If there's one thing that the Steelers have, it is edge rushers. Front like seven. They, which, by the way, they signed uh, T.J. Watt to his fifth-year extension, fifth-year option, whatever. Yeah. So he'll be back again, obviously. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't think there was ever a question. But, um, but you know, after, after you get done getting an edge rusher, they go get another running back who Michael just talked about on Twitch, Anthony McFarland out of Maryland. Now, that kid can absolutely fly. He's, he's incredibly skilled, incredibly talented but they already got a bunch of skill guys. So, okay, like I understand it's a team need, but you got Benny Snell in the draft last year. He was okay. Uh, you got James Conner. He's pretty good too. Okay, you know, after that, you got Kevin Dotson from Louisiana, who I think they reached for. Uh, I mean, he's an interior offensive lineman who is big. He's a big old boy. But when you go back and actually do it and – Obviously, because I'm a Steelers fan, I've gone and watched, you know, highlights. And the highlights look great on these guys, but if you look at their grades, it's not great, right? So, obviously, you can you can make highlight tapes out of anybody. Um, so, I would love to see Kevin Dotson be, you know, good, but that's the only offensive lineman that they drafted. They got safety Antoine Brooks out of Maryland. They got uh, uh, defensive lineman Carlos Davis out of Nebraska in round seven. You know, at that point, you're just taking flyers on guys. I, as a Steelers fan, I was not impressed with what they did in the draft. Now, that's, you know, I rarely am I impressed with what they do in the draft. And they end up coming out looking like gangbusters, typically. They, so, they develop players better than most people in the league. Yeah. I mean, they, they really do. Um, the issue is, so do the Ravens. And that's like, yeah, obviously oh, well, the, yeah. Bengals, yeah, the Bengals are getting better. The Browns, mm-hmm. I think, are getting better. Mm. Um, I mean, we'll, listen. Neither the Bengals or the Browns have developed anybody in a long time. They get better because sometimes they've gone out and gotten guys, or yeah. they've drafted guys, but they haven't taken like a two star that you know was in college and played pretty well and 
came in as a six round pick and turned that guy into an everyday starter in my life. Uh, you got a no. You got a valid point. No, no, they develop point. people. The Ravens. Well, but here's the, the thing: they've got they crap all the time. They both got Patriots newer coaching staff. Seattle does it all the time. Uh, the elite teams do it a lot. Yes, but the Browns and Bengals obviously have flipped over front offices, flipped over uh, yeah. coaching staffs and whatnot. So, so obviously there is unlimited okay. hope right now, which is always a good right. thing. Right. Uh, but I, getting, I struggle with ever trusting the Browns front office because tomorrow it'll be different. Yeah, that's uh, three that is people a very valid in that front point. office will be fired before next year, even if they win ten games, because Jimmy's just can't I get along with everybody. Was, yeah, he, well, I don't know that he can't get along with them. I just think. He, I don't know, he just likes constant chaos, I guess. I don't. Yeah. Uh, McKinnon jumped in on Facebook. He said, uh, and this is a very valid point, he said, doubling down on your strengths, question mark? Like, yeah. I mean, that's basically what it looked like. You know? I, I'm okay building strength on strength to an extent. This is, I don't see this as that, though. No, they already had depth Ma- at all these Mainly positions. because I don't think I'm in love with any of the players they took. I guess that's the difference. If they were have taken J.K. Dobbins, then I'd be like, okay, they got strength on strength. They're already really good at running the football. Now they're going to be even better at running the football, and I like that. Yeah. Taking a running back that, mm, okay, I don't know, you know, taking the edge rusher, that you, that's not strength on strength to me because I'm not so – but we talked about this yesterday, and I guess we'll do this purpose here. The whole reason any of these guys get any of these grades is based off of what the people grading them's biases and and understanding of what these players are are. Um, Pro Football Focus has the Steelers at being like a, a B minus, while uh, Fantasy Pros has the Steelers being a D minus. Yeah. Well, how are we so far apart on their grade? Well, Pro Football Focus liked these guys a whole lot better. Then fantasy pros like these guys that they took. Yeah. They, they still they look at them and say they took the same dudes, but everyone grades differently, and it's all based on if if you had Claypool high, if you had Highsmith high, if you had McFarlane high, then you're gonna say they had a hell of a draft. Yeah, and which is those guys like, low. It's also why. Yeah, it's why we don't give letter grades. We tell you whether no, we, we like. We it or say dislike. we like, dislike, love, or hate. We haven't really hated anybody yet. We haven't loved anybody yet. I dislike this team yeah i i dislike as well i it it didn't make They're the it, obvious loser in this division yes for the draft grade yes 100 percent. it it didn't make sense to me what their it, it almost looked like they went into this with no plan they just went with their it, as lombardi talks about their horizontal board and their horizontal board looked completely different from everybody else's right so they weren't <laughs> drafting yeah, just trade back. Yeah, now, it, it wasn't for need. For like, they weren't drafting for need at any of these positions, but none of these guys had any real value if you go look at the big board of, of any, any not major just, media. Not thing. just Mel Kuyper in it, okay? Across the board, everybody assumed these guys were reaches. Yes. Hey, McKinnon said, don't worry, you'll hate the Falcons outside of round two. <laughs> but yes, like, they, everybody that the... Other than the late picks that the Steelers got, yeah. everybody was a reach. Everybody was a reach. And I don't understand that, especially for, you know, players that are not in a position of need. So, I don't know how it makes you any better. I don't know. It, I, I, none of it made any sense to me. Like, obviously, I'm going to be pulling for them, and I hope it's, you know, I hope it works out well. I, I, I hmm. thought... And if they if they if this is a team that makes the move for Cam, then that makes all the sense in the world. Um, if not, this was a team that I thought was going to go up and get from or Eason. Yeah, yeah. I, I because they the same need thing. they need to start looking at life without Ben pretty quickly, and you never want to wait until it's over to do that. I agree a hundred percent. Like it, they, we've been through the Mason Rudolph years. We've been through not Mason Rudolph years, but uh. But last yeah, season, no, he's was done. He can't do it. Yeah, uh, but uh, well, Landry, who was the guy? Landry, Landry Jones. It. Yeah, Landry like Jones. You, you know, you know, right now, you have enough tape on both those guys to know you don't want them on your roster. Yeah, they don't need to be there. They can't do it. You're 100 percent right. You're 100 percent right. It, it's those guys are not your your quarterbacks of the future. Uh, Doug Hodges definitely not it. Yeah, you got to get somebody else in there. Uh, I think Cam fits best. I think that's where he'll end up. Um, and would it surprise me if Ben doesn't last the whole season again? I mean, it, it was yeah. it was January that they were talking about he may not play football again. 
And then in March, all of a sudden, he feels 10 years younger and his arm feels the best he's ever thrown. But like, the, I, I don't the know what minute he starts getting hit, how is he going to feel? Exactly. He's been a calendar year without being hit. So, yeah, you start feeling great now. After first quarter of game one, how are you feeling now you're getting beat on? Uh, let's let's get to this. We got the loser of the draft for this division. Who do you think the winner is? Because I, I'm having a hard time picking a winner. I like what the other three teams did as a whole. I think this division got a lot better on draft day. Oh, I think it did as well. I think it did as well. It, if the Steelers have a quarterback – then they are still a really, really good football team. Oh, no, team. yeah. The Steelers are they're, they're not bad. The reason they didn't draft well is because they don't really have to, and they didn't have yeah. good draft picks to begin with because their team's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, they, they only had uh, six picks in this draft. So, you know, is what it is. Um, I I would say uh, so my, the Steelers are, are the losers the, they're uh, the obvious in this division. Losers. I'm having a hard time parsing the other three. I'm, I'm going to go with. I think I'm going to go with your Browns. So I, I kind of want it to, but I didn't want to be the homer there. The only reason I think it's between the Browns and the Bengals, because while the Ravens are an unbelievable team, the way they draft it, I think the value of everybody is, is either with T Higgins in the second round is just stealing as, yeah. a, as a receiver. That, there's no reason two other receivers should have gone before him. That there's just there's just no way you can quantify how you looked at his Jalen Rager or uh, yeah. Brandon Ayuk or Ayuk, whoever yeah. else yeah yeah the, 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 just I just can't I can't get there but okay. the only reason those, those guys guys yeah they, they got drafted all because the tape of speed. And the highlights from those guys and I I just can't get there the the only reason they got drafted high is because of their speed that is it that's the only oh thing. there's so much more to football than that I know I, I know, know that but, it's important. Well, but, but this I is mean, this is kind of like when everybody Julio Jones was anywhere close to the fastest receiver in football anymore. No, but but, but he, nobody listen, wants to go against him, right? He's still a monster. Exactly. It, it, here's the deal, though. Sean Hopkins. How long has Larry Fitzgerald been great, and he hasn't been elite level speed since his rookie year? I mean, it, it, in over a decade. Uh, I just but no, don't look, understand. Look, look, it is it's different, and and here's why these teams are doing this. You saw this not this past season, but the season before. Everybody wanted a piece of Sean McVay, right? Everybody was hiring Sean McVay's laundry guy yes. and whoever else. Yeah. The Chiefs just won the Super Bowl with speed on speed on speed on speed, right? But their offense is built completely different than everybody else's. If you're not going to spend the next 10 years completely deconstructing the way you play football and building it in that image, then just drafting like them is going to make you fall on your face. But they made everybody believe that you have to have that deep play threat, and You're the guys that drafted believe. these guys didn't have it. Uh, Michael Fritz jumps in on Twitch, by the way. Baltimore wins the draft and probably the division. I hope the others keep it close. Well, I think hey. the, I think they're going to win the division. I don't know if that's going to be close. I'd love to see them not win it. Yeah. But I think they're the far and away best team. That's why I'm trying to I, – I don't know that they won the draft out of this division, but – I'm trying to take away the fact that they have Lamar. They have a great offensive line. They have Hollywood Brown. Uh, Hollywood Brown. Like, those can't affect my decision in this. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Um, yeah, Michael said everyone's looking for the next uh, the next hill. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what this is. Um, well, if you're not going to run an offense like, like they run, hill's really not that valuable. Yeah, and I agree 100%. 100%. I mean, there's 20 receivers. If Hill was on any other offense – there's 20 receivers better than him. Yeah. Hill's elite because of the play calling and the way the offense is designed by Andy Reid and the and the, the the chess pieces they have on offense and Patrick Mahomes. If you don't have Patrick Mahomes as a quarterback, then Hill's, Hill's value goes way down. What yeah. do you look like the couple of games Mahomes didn't play? Because he was still fine, but yeah, he but, wasn't. But they couldn't get him the football. He wasn't elite. That's right. Like, all his skills go away. If you think Derek Carr is going to get rugs the football deep all day long, you it's haven't not been watching football the last three years. It's yeah. just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. You're uh, you're 100% right. Um, so, I'm going to give it to my Browns, too. I, I like the Willis draft pick. Um, I, I want it, Werford, but we're talking. Werft, I, I'm never going to pronounce his yeah. name right. Werft. He's the best lineman, I thought, in this draft. But we're splitting hairs between him and Wills. I thought they were one and two. Um, and I, 
thought there was kind of a gap maybe between them and Thomas and then a gap between them and Becton. So, I, you know, I, you know, I, I, as long as they got one of those two guys, I was ecstatic, selfish. I love the double pick. I, I trust the, the Phillips pick. I'm not worried about that. Yeah. I, I think, Harrison I Bryan, think I think, was a very good pick. You know, yeah, I think, I think Jordan value. Elliott but from Missouri, he's going to be a stud. I think that guy has a chance. The, and the reason being is because he's not going to have to do everything on that team. That defense is really good. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think I, I'm going to give it to them. I'm I'm doing the same. I'm going to give it to the Browns. Uh, I need a trigger I, man. I need Baker to either nut up or shut up this year. Yeah. And I, I think that's the point because if, if he doesn't, obviously they'll go in, they'll draft another quarterback. So Cause this team is, I, I believe they're loaded. I believe this team is loaded. I really yeah, think that. they've got a I, ton I, of talent. Every level of the field, and this year they shirt up the. The reason there aren't any free agent offensive linemen is because the Browns sucked them all up. They <laughs> the Browns, paid everybody in the league. The Browns stole them all. Stole they, them all. They did. Well, they didn't steal them. They paid them. They broke up in the checkbook and they said, "You three guys are coming to Cleveland, and we're paying you." You got that right. You got that right. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us for today. Uh, if you want to see the NFC North recap, obviously you can go over to our YouTube page. It is up there, or you can watch it from yesterday's show on whatever platform you're watching. Wherever you are watching, please make sure that you are subscribed. Share the show out with your friends if you would so kindly. Leave a nice comment, a nice review. We always appreciate that. You can find everything you need to about us over at winningcureseverything.com. Chris, is there anything else we need to hit today? No, man, that's it. Tomorrow we're going to do AFC East, correct? AFC East tomorrow. Yep, stay in the AFC. AFC East. So we'll talk about the uh, the Patriots. We'll talk about the Jets. We'll talk about the Dolphins. And we'll talk about the Bills. And it will be a good time. And then we'll move to the NFC East on Thursday. You guys have been magnificent. We appreciate everybody that jumped in the chat today. You guys were very active. We always, always appreciate you guys doing that and uh, keeping the conversation going. Thank you so much for uh, uh, Michael said. Thanks, fellas. What division coming tomorrow? AFC East tomorrow. Uh, we will get to your Broncos soon enough. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. We will uh, We will go on and get out of here. Everybody take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And we will see you all tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com. Or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.